Thank you very much, Betsy, for this wa warm welcome. I'm delighted to be joined by two of the students of my my course. It's um, actually only my it was my second course, so I'm still quite new to the ICD, and it is, it's a great honor to be here today to speak to you. I'm Elke Ritte, and I'm the head of arts of the British Council in Germany. And for those of you who are not so familiar with the British Council, just a few words about the organization. Uh, the British Council is the UK's organization for educational opportunities and uh, cultural relation, a public body with a royal charter, charitable status, and a cultural diplomacy function. Nearly 80% of the British Council's annual income is self-generated, mainly through the teaching of English, uh, the English language testing exams, IELTS and APTIS, and through other educational activities. The British Council also receives a direct grant uh, in aid from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and it is Philip Hammond, it was William Hague, the Foreign Secretary, who is responsible for the, uh, the British, uh, for the British Council's activities to the British Parliament. With its long-standing worldwide presence, the British Council makes a major contribution to the UK's international profile. Having existed for 80 years and operating in 110 countries, so in many of your countries probably, British Council networks provide a comprehensive global reach, promoting knowledge of the UK and developing links between the UK and other countries, primarily in the British Council's strategic business areas, arts, English and education. In a globalized, digitalized and ever more crowded and competitive world, the British Council functions as the UK's cultural diplomacy tool that is furthering national interests through the promotion of culture and values worldwide. And its potential, to, uh, um, potential return to the UK globally is considered enormous in terms of soft power, trust building, helping outward mobility from the UK to the rest of the world, attracting people who matter to the UK's future, reputation and prosperity, not least in moments and places of crisis. We presently experience this in Russia, where the British Council has been planning the year-long bilateral festival UK-Russia Year of Culture. Due to the present political tensions with Russia, Scottish and UK ministers of governments have withdrawn their backing for the festival and they boycott shows they had planned to attend. The British Council as a non-political people-to-people organization, however much concerned about the situation in the Ukraine, of course, sticks to the festival project in the belief that when political or diplomatic relations become difficult, cultural exchange helps to maintain open dialogue, trust between people and institutions. The British Council study from 2012, Trust Pays, on how international cultural relationships build trust in the UK and underpin the success of the UK economy, analyzes trust as key success factor to cultural relations work. Now, please imagine being the newly arrived British Council director in Germany. That is actually a fact, there's a new director. Germany, a country, um, traditionally having been one of the driving forces in the European Union. Europe's biggest country, with over 80 million inhabitants. A country with the world's fourth biggest GDP. As British Council director, it is your challenge to create impact and influence for the UK in Germany. First of all, you are faced with a uniquely rich market in terms of the number of arts and education venues, festivals, projects, partners, where innovative projects from the UK hope to make a difference. Second, you are faced with an in-depth belief into the value of culture. The concept of we are a cultural nation is deeply rooted 
in people's mind and reflected in the widespread voluntary civic engagement in cultural activities. Just think of the Kunstvereine network uh, for visual arts or the friends of opera houses and theaters in existence in Germany. And also in the ongoing debate on whether to protect arts and culture as a human right explicitly in the text of the German constitution, the Verfassung. Third, you are still faced with artist and arts-driven institutional programs rather than audience and customer-focused offers. Although a shift towards the latter becomes apparent when looking at recent investment in marketing, audience development, and enhanced use of social media communication by leading cultural venues and festival, and of course by the many new startups in the cultural sector, particularly here in Berlin. You're also faced with a comparatively well subsidized cultural landscape with taxpayers' investment via cities and communities, via the 16 federal lender, the owners of educational and cultural authority in Germany, and via the federal government looking after some institutions of national interest and providing project support through the Federal Cultural Foundation. There are concerns about budget cuts in this country but, um, and some even talk about a crisis, but in comparison to the UK and many other countries, you see a healthy and flourishing cultural landscape in Germany. And we just heard about the situation in the Auswärtiges Amt where culture uh, gets most of the funding. There's high moral support from the arts pages of the national and local newspapers whenever institutions like the Goethe Institute are in danger of suffering from cuts. Internationally, it is particularly the annual increase of the federal cultural budget presently at 1.2 billion euro, which is noted with a mix of envy and respect. Fifth, you are faced with a whole host of organizations dealing with aspects of cultural diplomacy tasks. There is, of course, the Goethe Institute, often considered the British Council's only analog um, organization. The Goethe Institute mainly dealing with German language and culture. There is the German Academic Exchange Service, the DAAD, um, dealing with higher education exchange and running the unique Berlin Artist Program, the Berliner Künstlerprogramm, attracting international artists to spend a one-year residency in Berlin, a very generous program. There is the Educational Exchange Service, the Pädagogische Austauschdienst in Bonn, dealing with school exchanges. There is IFA, the Institute for Foreign Relations in Stuttgart, dealing with touring exhibitions and current cultural dialogue. They publish um, a, a cultural report every year, and they have a magazine called Cultural Exchange, Kulturaustausch. And there are a number of foundations, uh, like the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, dealing with international postgraduate research and many others, um, who look after further areas of foreign cultural relations. So you notice, in comparison to the UK, which only has the British Council as one umbrella organization for all international cultural relations work, Germany is investing a lot in inf uh, inf uh, infrastructure uh, of uh, an institutional kind, in the number of cultural and cultural diplomacy tools. This may give the impression that Germany um, is a cultural bureaucracy. And indeed, when you look at it, it is not easy to navigate through the numerous institutions and understand their often overlapping purposes. Germany's manifold infrastructures seem costly as well, but Germany's model has the great benefit of widely spreading cultural diplomacy messages through a number of strong brands, addressing different audiences, 
involving more people in different places, acting as cultural relations ambassadors, and convincing them of the value of cultural relations work by inviting them to participate. So it's a kind of participatory culture in the cultural um, diplomacy area in Germany. Sixth, and last but not least, you find out that Germany hosts the biggest number of internationally active cultural partner organizations, corporate companies, and foundations in the whole of the EU. Some were mentioned by Mark already, the Mercator Stiftung, um, Robert Bosch Stiftung, Siemens Foundation, others. And this has not only large potential for export revenue to the subject areas the British Council is interested, but also greatest potential for partnering on a global basis. With these observations about Germany's cultural sector in mind, how can you, as British Council Director, go about promoting British culture and values in the interest of the UK and Germany? The British Council has decided against a one-way projection of the best of UK culture and puts partnerships at, of mutual benefit at the core of its strategic approach. This is in the belief that the nature of partnership work is closely aligned to cultural relations work and that by working in partnership with governments, corporations and foundations, much greater impact can be achieved than by the British Council alone. Partnerships are formally understood as agreements between institutions to achieve a joint objective in which delivery is jointly held, as is risk, and for which each party provides not necessarily equal funding. Partnerships are considered the most effective model of delivering cultural diplomacy objectives in terms of building trust and understanding, of facilitating a space for dialogue, of creating impact, enhancing the audience reach, and in terms of cost effectiveness. British Council partnerships serving cultural relations purposes in Germany exist with many cultural venues and festivals, those of you who live in Berlin may have noticed the Foreign Affairs Festival in Berlin, part of the Berliner Festspiele, featured uh, four absolutely groundbreaking UK theatre productions involving 106 British artists. Partnerships exist with major foundations, for example, the Heinrich Böll Foundation. Um, there is a series of migrants and cultural related topics. Partnerships exist with government departments. We had a Creative Futures program uh, for visual artists from Scotland, with Creative Scotland, with the Bavarian State Chancellery and the British Council. Partnerships, of course, exist with the European Commission. Um, we had a large-scale cultural bridges project called My City, an art in the public domain project in Turkey with Turkish and European artists from five countries. And the Goethe Institute acted as an agent as well as the British Council, partnering on a literature initiative. The various foreign cultural policy arms in Germany, the DAAD, IFA, and PAD, are all engaged with the UK or the British Council in partnership agreements of differing formats. Most important of all, the mem Memorandum of Understanding with the Goethe Institute is one of the most important, trustful, and long-standing ones. Listing activities like exchange of key staff, regular exchange of knowledge and ideas in order to develop new products and services, capitalizing on the status, experience, and credibility of both organizations, co-location of offices, shared use of social media channels, and collaborative soft power approaches in joint target countries outside the European Union. Soft power is the main desired outcome from any cultural diplomacy efforts, defined as the ability to influence the actions of another through attraction rather than coercion. Attraction really is the buzzword in the UK at the moment. Um, and as a concept, 
attraction is really not very easy to grasp or define when you think about it. It involves feelings, emotions, the senses, images, and all of these are often more effective than ideas and certainly words. What attraction really means has been explored in detailed detail in three recent UK studies. Influence and attraction, culture and the race of soft power in the 21st century, a British Council study in 2013. The art of attraction, soft power and the UK's role in the world, a British Academy study from 2014 and actually a premiere today um, because it's just gone online, a new study as others see us and you have the, the link here. If you want to look at these publications, they're all under these links, but this is particularly this as others see us is the latest one which, go, which is published at this very moment um, by British Council and Ipsos Mori as others see us culture attraction and soft power. The question is, what makes one country attractive to another? What makes the UK attractive to Germany so that the German cultural sector is willing to partner with the UK and vice versa? The latest British Council study examines the relationship between culture, attraction, soft power. It compares Brazil, China, Germany, India, the United States, and the United Kingdom, investigating the following factors influencing national attractiveness by country. They're all symbols here. They are for people, countryside, and landscape, cultural and historic attractions, the weather, the arts, a reputation for being safe and secure, language, cities, history, economy, and business environment. One of the many findings of this new stu study is what makes a country attractive to Germans is in order of priority. First, countryside and landscape, and we do believe that um, looking at the UK, um, Rosamund Pilcher's popular TV adaptations show that Germans absolutely dream of English and Scottish countryside. Second, people, difficult to, to say where this comes from, but it may be the friendliness and openness and kindness of the people in general. It could be the cultural and ethnic diversity mentioned already of the UK people, the entertainment factor of the royal family, Mr. Bean, numerous eminent UK actors and sport champions. The third factor that makes um, countries attractive to Germany are cities. Germans are very frequent visitors of London. Um, according to the Anhalt GFK City Brands Index, the, London is the top ranking city in the world and also the top city of diverse cultural and ethnic backgrounds. Boris Johnson developed the mayor's cultural strategy, uh, cultural metropolis, around the attractions of London, promising that it won't be boring. Fourth, what makes um, countries attractive to Germany is the cultural and historic attractions, and we all know about the wealth of cultural heritage sites and the world's biggest festival in Edinburgh. And fifth, and that, that's where Germany is alone, the language. Um, opportunities to apply the English language always matter to Germans. So when looking at the UK's strength related to all of these attractions, to these attraction factors for Germany, we see that they rank very high. Obviously, a very good basis for partnering the UK with Germany. The recommendation of the study to the UK is to enhance the awareness of its major attractions, to invest further in its areas of strength, and uh, to let people and institutions do the talking about these strengths and attractions direct, not least because government involvement and even leadership in the soft power terrain tends to bear the risk of inviting suspicion. And because in the world of today, direct communication is easily facilitated via the widespread um, use of new information technologies in Germany, 
as well as globally. So I hope you will find the time to look at this study, and um, I hope I've managed to convince you that partnering is a good approach, um, a good cultural diplomacy approach for both Germany and the UK. Some research right now it is absolutely difficult to get an overall understanding of what the, uh, Germany is investing in culture, um, both internally and externally, because of the three levels. The, on the community and city level, every city, every community has a budget. Then the lender have a budget, and they are often very clear and transparent. There are um, clear strategies, and you can, can, can look this up quite easily. And also, there are only 16 of them. Um, then you have the federal budget, and the 1.2 billion referred to what uh, the um, institutions of national interest, what the strategy of the um, sort of uh, Kultusministerium, the cultural minister, has got available. So basically, that is the budget that Professor Monika Grütters is uh, um, administering at the moment. So, and this budget has been going up uh, in. Ten years ago, um, the federal level was not very strong at all in cultural investment. And now, um, with the unified Germany, there is an interest in getting a higher uh, international profile. More money is needed for major cultural institutions, both in Germany and also for work outside Germany. So. I didn't look up all the other figures, actually, so don't ask me about this. Uh, there, are, there is a Statistische Bundesamt, uh, w uh, which collects all the data, but uh, also if you go to the um, Auswärtiges Amt to see what is invested there, it is you get such a pile of paper, and it's, uh, it's extremely detailed, and there's not a top figure that you easily get to. It's um, great. Um, I know the, the British Council has many um, contracts as an agent on behalf of other government departments, and DFID is one of them. And uh, in, uh, in the European Union, we don't do this kind of work. We occasionally have a bid from the, the European Commission, but um, I'm, I'm not so cited on the many, many programs that the British Council is undertaking in other parts of the world. But um, as because we have such uh, a fantastic global network in 110 countries, and DFID can't be represented all over the world, they use the British Council to deliver on programs. Um, but the European Union doesn't have any of these so-called ODA programs. Um, so um, the government decides that it, it wants to do development um, work in certain parts of the world, but not here. So I'm not in touch with that area, and I don't in, um, know exactly what we are um, what we are delivering in this area. So sorry, you you would have to um, talk to um, people in Asia, or in, uh, our regional director Asia would be able to give you an overview um, of that. And the other uh, question, what, what I understood the people-to-people -people in engagement. Of course, um, I mean, here in Germany and, and the UK, there's so much interaction. I mean, EasyJet in many ways does a better job than the British Council in bringing people <laughs> together. Sorry, EasyJet and many other uh, um, air companies, of course, but particularly EasyJet because it's cheap. And But um, it's... Um, so we are not actually trying to showcase the UK. What we are really trying uh, to do is bringing people together so that they can do things together. And that's we, we are interested in long-term uh, term relationships, um, um, of course, through Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media channels. There is so much communication um, by y young people, in particular, um, between the UK and, and Germany and many other countries. So again, our role isn't immediately there. But um, through our exams work, um, uh, th this is absolutely a nece necessity, because in order to study in the UK, people often have to take an English language exam. So we are in touch with thousands of young people who um, need to prove that they have um, English language ability through an IELTS test. Um, and, and also, we don't teach English at the moment in Germany, but in many other countries, and actually in Spain, um, it is the, uh, the biggest English language teaching operation uh, in the world anywhere. Um, Obviously, here in Germany, you are, state, um, you are competing with a very high level of state um, teaching uh, of English. And in Spain, um, it doesn't seem to be that high. So it's, um, 
it's a market niche for us. Mm. There will always be this competitive element uh, in the area of language teaching. And of course, the Germans um, fight a much harder f fight than um, because German isn't spoken that, that widely in the world. Uh, so it's easier for us. But we do have a um, memoranda of understanding um, with the Goethe Institute in particular. And we deliver together in the Arab countries, and um, we deliver on programs together. We, we often share offices. It, it varies from country to country, and I don't know what it's like at the moment in Egypt. I think we have a very glossy building there, very, uh, in a way, an old-fashioned um, way of working. I mean, uh, what will become much more and more important for us is that we are working through digital cha channels, that we are working with partners, that we are not having our own building uh, which is showcasing our work, but we are going somewhere where the people are and where we're working together with somebody. And I think the Goethe Institute is similarly interested to us to create um, sort of common spaces of for public dialogue, for, for trustful dialogue with people. And they can be anywhere. Any university building might be better than our own building. So it's, um, and we, we do do this together. I mean, c uh, colleagues on the ground speak a lot. I mean, there, there is a, um, and p uh, also since the organization UNIC has come to existence, there is uh, much more of a feeling between those organizations to speak together because th so many of the aims are just the same. It's, it's, uh, they are, d they are democratic values, they are, um, um, there, there are lots of um, similar program uh, approaches uh, that the Goethe Institute and the British Council have got. But what is visible is, of course, that they are keeping for a language learning customer. So this compet uh, competitive element will remain, I think. Mm. And of course, the universities are ke uh, um, competing for you as international students in Germany and the UK. So. But it's it's uh, in a way it's a um, it's a fertile uh, competition. It's uh, it's about knowledge. It's about ideas. About it's about learning. So, uh, um, but I, th I think the the core interests of these two organisations are very very similar. Yes, um, uh, this is. Hmm, um, uh, I'm, I'm obviously, the Treasury is very interesting. What is happening to um, the FCO's grant? Um, the FCO grant is only marginally going to the European Union. So again, I don't know that much about it. But the rest of the world still gets some 20% um, of um, a grant, and of course, um, there uh, we are accountable for how we use this. Um, there's an ongoing um, fight between the FCO and the British Council on how to use this. Um, obviously, the British Council wants to be an arm's length organization. Uh, it doesn't want to be too tightly controlled. It likes to present the other side as well as the government side. Um, while, of course, um, governments try to use cultural diplomacy projects for their own purposes to further their own interests. But um, uh, for us, for the British Council, the opposi opposition is just as interesting. Uh, so um, we are quite concerned not to be uh, thematically and content-wise led by the FCO. Um, and, but of, of course, I mean, there are areas sometimes where we disagree. I remember in, um, even in Germany an event um, Tarek Ali trying to, um, we invited him and um, huge uproar in the, the British Embassy about it. So it's, um, it's uh, I, I think they, the, um, the FCO appreciates the work of the British Council very much um, because often when there are political and diplomatic problems and the dialogue between politicians stops um, and governance stops um, and becomes unhealthy, the British Council can go on working, and the Goethe Institute um, goes on working, and um, and uh, listens. Uh, the listening and the talking is um, um, the, the listening is more important, actually, to uh, stay in touch, to maintain the dialogue, um, and um, so I in a way, although. They don't want to do that, or they can't do that themselves, the governments. Uh, they are delighted to have such an arm's length organization to take on this role. So um, our chief executive, Martin Davidson, 
uh, is a Chinese, ex uh, has a huge Chinese uh, expertise, is a Mandarin speaker, and he um, accompanies David Cameron on his trips to China all the time. So it's um, as an advisor. It has the danger that we are understood too well and um, is, uh, that, that there will always be a tension because we want to be independent. But um, um, I think it is, um, it is important to stay an arm's length organization. And, um, and of course, f for the money we get, we need to report back in, um, in quite detail. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's like, uh, like any public institution, everything needs to be transparent these days. And it's a cumbersome process, highly bu bureaucratic. <laughs> and the boring thing is always finances, of course. A big challenge is that everybody has got less money available um, these days. And how do we get the income to go on operating the way we want? Um, uh, the council has a number of excellent products in the area of uh, English language and education, but the moment you are successful with earning income, others have an interest, um, and uh, that's the FCO, and they want to control and um, get an eye on it. So um, in, in a way, to maintain our hybrid uh, um, existence as both a grant receiver and uh, an enterprise, that's uh, to maintain that is a challenge um, uh, these days because obviously there, there's interest from other side, uh, also from UK institutions who want to have a share of the British Council's income. Um, then there are other, I mean, anybody is facing um, that products um, that you are creating, programs you are creating, uh, travel very fast at the moment. So when you have an idea for a project, it is omnipresent in the world. I mean, that's digitalization. Um, it's such an opportunity in a way to uh, that you can reach with your ideas and events and projects uh, by live streaming, by uh, using Facebook channels and others, um, by websites. You're, you have an omnipresence, wh whatever you do. Um, and that is um, this, this is really new. But it's quite difficult, actually, to <laughs> maintain your ideas and products as your own. So to protect um, them th uh, with a brand um, as your own. Because the, the moment you have them, they, are, they belong to the world. And I think that's a challenge for, um, for anybody working in the creative sector at the moment. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you... Um, we, we are, I mean, I'm really pri privileged having uh, created um, some new networks in the world. For example, in 2007, um, climate change was not very known in Germany among artists. In the UK, there was a group, um, Cape Farewell, and they were really forward thinkers, artists who traveled to the Arctic, discussed um, issues of climate change, um, met scientists, and, and so on. So we um, invited them and did a big campaign in Hamburg, uh, and we did two tipping point events where we brought scientists and climate researchers and artists together. And this is a fantastic network. And um, in a way, it would be great to be able to maintain this. But the British Council is not such an organization. We create networks and then let them fly. And um, this, is, uh, this is hurtful I mean, to me personally, because it's, uh, I mean, you create a, um, a program and you love it and you want to stay in touch with the people. But of course, my topic is the UK and there may be a new idea coming. So I have to leave that um, beloved idea. So it's um, in a way being able um, or finding ways of maintaining really excellent networks. I had another one on creativity, um, which we called Einstein Picasso. It was a meeting of scientists and artists uh, thinking of their creative processes. Again, amazing. But actually to maintain it for me and for the British Council um, proves impossible. And um, often they then disappear. Um, and which is sad. So I'd like a model where these networks can be maintained. Yes, I mean, I don't know what it's like in um, Morocco. I only um, visited the office once, and it's a long time ago. And um, 
It's, uh, you are right. I think um, uh, it is easy for us to reach those who have a level of English already, yeah, because most of our events are in English, and so you rule uh, out quite a large um, population already. We are trying to be inclusive. We are running major programs, for example, for um, disabled people. We have an unlimited program which involves um, um, artists um, with um, a lack of functions in, in certain areas, um, and it's a, it's a well-paid uh, program. So uh, there, there are attempts to be inclusive in many ways, but um, a lot more could be done. I mean, it's th there is an awareness of it, but, but um, I think the problem is the under to reach the underprivileged is it's not actually very easy. It's uh, to identify them. Um, I mean, there have been there have been programs around dreams and teams. Our um, uh, football program, which uh, targeted um, underprivileged k uh, school kids, and I can think of a number of programs, and they made a difference. I mean, in, in South Africa, this was the pro program which was very strong, but. Um, um, in Germany, we, uh, we d certainly don't do enough. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's um, and uh, yeah, mm. we we need to be bigger to do more or um, refocus. And it's it's not actually in our royal charter. I mean, uh, it often helps to f um, to consider why was an organisation set up. We were not set up um, to. Um, address an underprivileged audience. We were set up to work for the benefit of the UK in areas of the arts, English education. This is our core mission, and often we move away from this core mission. Um, and uh, But you're absolutely right. Uh, if we could involve everybody, that would be much better. Um, yes, I mean, with the um, Goethe Institute, uh, for example, we, uh, the British Council often works in um, uh, on EU projects outside um, Germany, and, and I gave you an example before, which was called My City. It, it had to do with um, bringing the Tur uh, Turkey closer to um, the EU, and the EU handed out um, major grants uh, to cultural institutions like Goethe Institute, like British Council, like Institut Francais, um, to uh, develop cultural bridges um, for Turkey with the EU. And um, we, um, the British Council, went out to develop an art in the public domain project, um, which um, happened in places like Çanakkale, in Istanbul, Mardin, and, and, and two more, uh, Trabzon. Um, and we went out to show art in the public domain, which is actually not very common at all in, in Turkey. It is in, in Istanbul now, but it, is, it certainly isn't in, in Mardin. So the artist there, Clemens von Wedemeyer, designed a big screen. And this screen is now used as an open-air cinema uh, ever since. Th this city didn't have um, a cinema at all. So the artist created something quite unique. And the Goethe Institute was working with us on this cultural um, bridges project, but they approached the issue um, via literature. So again, they were looking at dialogue in the public domain, and they rented um, uh, a train or compartments of, of a train, and had uh, writers, German writers, uh, but also others, travel through Turkey and addressing audiences on the train with their literature. So we were um, de developing the program together uh, under the EU umbrella. It's, um, but there are many more programs. So there, I mean, any of the UNIC projects, for example, that you see in Berlin, um, they uh, have a, an element of uh, Goethe and um, British Council in it, and all in all, there are 28 cultural institutions um, or uh, UNIC members who participate, so there's a lot of collaboration with these organizations. Um, yes, I mean, with the um, English language teaching in Arab countries, that, uh, I mean, lots of Arabs are t our teachers, I mean, they're, they're not all white uh, British uh, teachers going to Morocco and teaching English, but there is quite a number of local staff as well who are involved in the teaching of English. So there is a natural 
involvement. Um, and um, it, on the other question, I'm not so. I'm, we would really need to look at the director. No well, I mean, we are not teaching English in Germany. Uh, we are. We just have an exams um, um, a scheme, but uh, we do ha um, provide um, a preparation course for non-Germans um, um, and, um, and, and who, who, need to, and who have to take the IELTS test. So there is something like that. Um, and also, um, um, I mean we have a, a big English learning portal which has English studying product globally. Um, that is not specifically for Germany at all. Um, but that ha addresses different audiences with different um, backgrounds. Um, so, but again, I, I'm, I'm not the English specialist, I'm the head of arts, so I, I didn't look at it recently. But um, no, uh, obviously it's very important for us to um, address customers um, and pick them up where they are, rather than um, impose something on them which they are, which is alien to them.